Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I wanna talk about one of the most discussed unique texts in the upcoming Indian DLC and try to put it into some perspective. The Dravidians in the new expansion have a tech called Woot Steel that allows their infantry and cavalry attacks to ignore armor. This is on top of a 50% cost reduction for barracks techs, and the first reaction by me and I think many others is that this sounds very strong. Of course, the funny thing about balance is it's hard to know until you see it in practice, and this bonus happens to be quite easy to replicate in the scenario editor. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at how it stacks up with other infantry unique techs and whether or not it's enough to make their Imperial Age cavalry viable. Now, of course, another unit already has this ability, so one might argue it should easily fit in the game, but it's not quite that simple. Remember, the Lightus was designed with its armor ignoring effect explicitly in mind, whereas the Champion and Halberdier lines were not. So you have to think about lots of different unit interactions when introducing a tech like this. One important piece of context here is the historical inspiration for it. Woot steel was invented in South India and used for swords, knives, etc., though the material was also exported to create the related Damascus steel in the Middle East. It had a distinctive banding pattern that almost looks like flowing water, and seemingly a reputation within the ancient and medieval world as being the best of the best. Its reputation and unique pattern has inspired things like Valyrian steel in A Song of Ice and Fire, and there's accounts of crusaders feeling Damascus steel swords made from boots were superior to European weaponry. For example, a commonly circulated quote says that one blow of a Damascus sword would cleave a European helmet without turning the edge, or cut through a silk handkerchief drawn across it. Now, I couldn't find a primary source for that, but from the perspective of a developer trying to create an infantry-based sieve from South India, it's pretty easy to see how we arrive at an armor-negating bonus from the prevalence of that quote about Woot Steel. This is all just to give a bit of context that the effect isn't random, and I think is explicitly trying to create this connection while being intentionally quite strong. Unfortunately, at this point, we don't know any of the stats for their unique unit, but in that case, the unit can be designed with this tech in mind, so in some ways, I'm least worried about that unit benefiting too unexpectedly from the tech. So now that we have all of that context, let's start things off at the stable. It turns out Dravidians have a very weak looking stable in Imperial Age especially, with only Castle Age level light cavalry and battle elephants. Let's focus on light cavalry first. Of course, they're missing a ton of upgrades, not just Hazar, but Bloodlines, Husbandry, and even the last cavalry armor tech. That would otherwise make them equivalent to Viking light cavalry, but now let's see how they perform once they ignore enemy armor. As a quick and dirty comparison, against generic Hazar, they lose pretty convincingly. What's going on is while Dravidian light cavalry are taking out Hazars in 9 attacks instead of the usual 12 thanks to ignoring armor, because of the missing bloodlines and armor upgrade, the Hazars are taking out the light cav in just 7 attacks, so as a complete package, the light cavalry are lagging behind. In fact, this is going to be their problem against most units with low melee armor, where against halberdiers, champions, and especially skirmishers, they're going to perform much worse than even generic Hazar. In most cases, it seems Dravidian light cavalry just won't survive long enough for their larger attack to overcome the missing techs. Of course, there are a couple of extreme cases. Against Boyars, with their 11 melee armor, Dravidian light cavalry does about 6 times the usual damage, and there's an argument that could be a cost-effective trade if selling 100 food at the market fell under a price of 36 gold, which you might see in a post-imperial situation. Even more extreme, against elite Teutonic Knights, they do 7 times the usual damage, which could again be arguably cost-efficient in a post-imperial fight where a Teuton player was selling food at a very low price. Don't get me wrong, these are extreme outliers, and generally it's safe to assume that Dravidian Light Cavalry will underperform in Imperial Age matchups, especially against anything ranged, given their lack of HP and armor. With Light Cavalry looking so far less than impressive, let's switch now to the Battle Elephant. I should note here that Dravidians have a Castle Age unique tech that allows their elephants to regenerate 20 HP per minute. That would require over 12 minutes to fully heal from 1 HP, but in the odd case that could come in handy. They're still missing lots of techs in Imperial Age though, so let's see how they fare. Testing them out against all of the Rise of the Broadjaws battle elephants, you can see they lose one on one against all of them, even Malay, which lack two cavalry armor upgrades. While Dravidians are ignoring armor, the other elephants here have up to a 70 HP advantage and two more base attack. As we might expect, the same sort of pattern shows up against other units as well. For example, against one of their most common counters, they have the least HP remaining after a fight with a halberdier one-on-one. -on -one. We also see a very similar thing against paladins, and while they damage the paladin relatively quickly, they lag behind all sieves except melee in terms of HP remaining. Remember, Malay Battle Elephants have a 40% discount in Imperial Age, so it really feels like Dravidians here are overpaying for what they're getting. 
Again, in a couple of situations, like against Elite Boyars or Elite Teutonic Knights, you can find a couple of cases where this shines against high armor targets. But the point is, in the vast majority of interactions, Dravidian Cavalry look to have some bottom tier options at the stable, even after Woot Steel, which seems to be creating a glass cannon out of units that typically are meant to be damaged sponges. But now let's switch gears and take a look at the barracks, where they have fully upgraded halberdiers and champions. We'll start with the halberdier. Now, there happen to be a lot of civilizations with bonuses for their halbs, and trying Dravidians against all of them, Dravidians actually come out on top, 1v1, by a decent margin if they get in the first hit. In fact, it turns out even if their enemy gets the first strike, Dravidians still end up winning against all of these civilizations, except Burmese. From this, it looks like armor-ignoring Dravidian halberdiers are easily in the conversation, at least as top tier. With that said, post-Imperial Slavs in large numbers can have a small edge, thanks to splash damage, and Goths with equal resources are still clearly stronger. Of course, adding a wrinkle to all of this, we have to keep in mind a lot of the Halberdier's power is in its bonus damage to cavalry. As one example, against a fully upgraded cavalier, we see Dravidians are quite respectable, doing slightly better than Burmese and almost as well as Japanese. You might then expect them to really excel against Boyars, given its high armor, but it turns out the faster attack of Japanese in this case again outpaces armor negation. What we notice in every example is that while Dravidian Halberdier aren't always performing the best, they're consistently very strong. Of course, there is one case where they're very clearly the best, and that's against Teutonic Knights. In fact, in this case, they're arguably cost-effective when 100 food is selling for less than 34 gold at the market. Another odd case is against the Cataphract. Unfortunately, the description we get before release doesn't specify whether ignoring armor means just melee or all types of armor. I imagine it only applies to melee, but would make it equivalent to either plus 5 or plus 21 attack, depending on how it's interpreted. Overall though, I think it's fair to say it's a very strong bonus for Halbs, putting them toe-to-toe -to -toe with Japanese in many examples, and stronger than nearly all civs one-on-one. At the same time, it's hard to argue it's grossly overpowered, and it's only against the Teutonic Knights that we're entering uncharted territory. But now let's finish up with its effects on the champion. Again, in a very straightforward 1v1 comparison against top tier champion civs, we can see Dravidians beat all of them if Dravidians get the first hit. Whereas if the enemy hits first, in some cases they lose, implying they're about on the same level as those civs in melee. Similar to Halberdiers, they also lose to Slavs in large numbers or against Goths with equal resources, though I do see those as a separate category since they're a bit more situational. In case you're curious between those two which one would win, it's pretty clearly the Goths, who are still in a league of their own with equal resources spent. To give a couple other examples, Dravidian champions don't do appreciably better against Paladins than comparable civs despite their high armor, though once we get into units with 9 armor and above, like Bulgarian two-handed swordsmen with big gains, things start to tip pretty clearly in the Dravidian's favor. As expected, they're easily the best against the Elite Boyar and Teutonic Knight, nearly taking on an Elite Teutonic Knight one-on-one, -on -one, which is something I never expected to say about a champion. Going back to the Crusader quote, I could even understand an argument this is more of an Easter egg or reference, similar to the lightest callback to the Polish-Lithuanian success against the Teutonic Order. For the barracks overall, to me there's really no question the tech makes their infantry very strong, often giving something similar or better than the Burmese plus 3 attack bonus and even the Aztec's Garland Wars. Compared to Aztecs, they even get the Halberdier, so their infantry really start to stand out. At the same time, I would push back against the idea that the tech is inherently overpowered, as remember it's locked behind an Imperial Age tech. Similar Imperial Age techs for infantry range from 1200 to 1700 resources, and I would expect this tech to fall on the lower end of that, especially if the devs want to push this as part of the Civ's identity. Somewhat related to this, Dravidians also have a pretty good archery range, with a wood discount and some faster firing archery range units. While Dravidians are labeled as an infantry Civ, infantry has always been inherently less popular than archers and cavalry online, and something the devs have been trying to encourage more of, so I expect they'll price Woot Steel to encourage infantry play as an alternative to fully upgraded Arbalesters. Overall, while I may be jumping the gun here with this sort of speculation just before the DLC is released, hopefully this gives some context for both the new Dravidian civilization as well as how this tech ranks against some of the other top tier infantry civs. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.